I'm, I'm going to go quick to the presentation uh, to give them the floor to Pavel, I guess, and that uh, will do its own um, in Canvas, and then it will give us a, a taste of the pitch. As Powell said, uh, the Lean Canvas is a tool that helps in fine-tuning uh, the, the initial brainstorm done with the characterization table, and uh, it's very useful to start identifying elements related to sustainability uh, and to pave the way to the roadmap. Again, sustainability means how we are going to make sure that the project result, the key exploitable result, is used after the project end. Uh, we are all aware uh, with the situation, which is typical uh, from the project logic. Powell explained this very, very uh, clearly. Uh, at the end of the project, we finish the money uh, and we start asking questions to ourselves. Uh, uh, about how we are going to raise the money needed, needed eh, to get things going. So who is going to provide us with funds or who is going to pay us because we are performing contract research, because we are aiming at licensing or because we are willing eh, to go to market uh, with a piece of equipment or with another kind of service. The consequence of running out of money is that we need to quit what we are doing. We need to jump into another project. Uh, no use, no impact. Uh, and again, if we are planning uh, to look at the European Commission as a possible funding partner, and if we are looking to apply to programs like Horizon Europe, which are impact oriented, not being able to demonstrate impact, not being able to achieve impact, uh, may limit uh, our opportunities to win future funds. So, hmm, how we can a look at this issue of secure resources. The approach uh, that uh, we are testing since many years in working with uh, uh, European programs uh, is related to the fact uh, that if, if we need to build uh, let's say client base, uh, quoting clients in bracket, meaning people uh, we can rely on to get resources for the future. Uh, uh, we need to follow a problem based approach for the simple consideration uh, that everybody has a problem, uh, that there is a problem. Sorry, there is a solution uh, for that problem, and that could be, of course, uh, also different from what we have in mind, but there is always somehow a solution. But what it is clear uh, that not every solution has a problem, and not every problem has a customer, meaning somebody. Uh, willing to get involved, share resources, and eventually pay. This is why we force, when we work with exploitation, to follow a problem-based approach, starting with problems and not with the solution. We come from the technical domain. domain I mean, we are very much into technology solution. Uh, the attempt here to pave the way, the way towards impact and exploitation is to go from a technology pool approach, approach uh, and try to enter into a problem-based approach. So to go from the risk uh, connected that not every solution has a problem into the opportunity uh, related to building what we call the client base solving problems. So. 
The way to put together things that Powell said is the business model, uh, which is built around the fact that a key question, uh, why should somebody uh, buy, adopt, use our solution? And uh, the challenge is to understand uh, how to go into this logic uh, in an innovative way. Uh, and how to do this uh, knowing uh, that we have a knowledge to supply and we have a background that can be used uh, and that things if they if they are well planned uh, they have an impact and how to approach this challenge we are all scientists uh, we use the scientific method uh, when we perform our let's say technical uh, job uh, but we forget uh, that we can use the scientific method also to approach the business to approach the business model uh, and the business model is a tool that helps us to find the logic behind and guide us in let's say a better design towards sustainability and impact. Again, scientific method. We pose assumptions and we need to validate assumptions. And here uh, we need to ask four key questions in order to validate these assumptions and make sure that things go as we uh, uh, thought. So again, what is the problem our potential customers in brackets uh, are going to solve? Of course, who are they? And this is why it's very important to focus on early adopters because we can ask them and validate with them understand how they solve the problem now and then validate how our solution is going to solve their problems much better that they're doing now huh? which if you think up may sound like also uh, innovation because huh? at the end of the day this is also uh, defining uh, how we know we are. So, what is the thing that brings all this together? It allows us to focus and to prepare the next step towards the roadmap and the pitch. Huh? Is the link canvas? It is true that the link canvas has been designed for startups huh? by Ash Maruya, but since it has been designed for startups uh, and startups are new things uh, startups are team new things are teams uh, that have the ambition to solve a problem much better than others and they have the ambition to bring a benefit and create an impact uh, then the link canvas can be also used of course interpreting it to the challenge of exploitation and making sure that our research results are used the link canvas is available on the website it's easy to download uh, but what is important is that it's approached uh, using a logic and a scientific method which means validating our assumptions and validating with early adopters. What is important is that when we start using the link canvas and uh, we follow a logic uh, as like uh, Leon Battista Alberti uh, follow its internal logic of harmony uh, and 
we focus on problems and problem owners, the customer segment. And then we focus down the early adopters uh, who are the ones who feel that problem uh, harder. Uh, because talking to them, validating with them, we can really, uh, really match the problem and the problem owners and understand if there is a fit. And then uh, once we have uh, identified the early adopters, we can investigate existing alternatives, understanding how they're trying to solve that problem today. And at this moment, moment uh, we can focus on the unit value proposition. Highlighting uh, what makes us standing out, which means uh, highlighting how we are going to solve, actually how better we are going to solve the problem that the adopters have, much better than alternative solutions. At this point, we have all the information needed to describe our solution. And this is very useful, eh? especially if we are going to talk to an audience, which is not our, let's say, close group, eh? our, our group of researchers, our group of people working on the topic. Because eh? if we are going to talk to somebody else, because they are part of our target group of customers in bracket, eh? they are interested in understanding how we are going to solve their problem better than the others. So this is a good way uh, to say the right words in few sentences on our solution. And then the unfair advantage, uh, Herbert said, uh, I struggle to, to, to focus on the unfair advantage. Unfair advantage, uh, it's stating what we have uh, and it's difficult to be copied or both. Uh, and of course, uh, our most important unfair advantage is the knowledge we build. But then we need to make sh sure uh, how we protect it. Uh, and this is where, for example, patenting come in, uh, comes in. But also, for example, working contracts may come in. Uh, uh, I don't remember if this was uh, Herbert saying, I mean, we face the fact that people leave the team uh, and this is creating problems. Of course, uh, designing working contracts in a way that this is not that easy uh, is also part of the unfair advantage. It's very important to have our own unfair advantage clear. Then the channels. Uh, how we reach out our, again, customers, uh, our early adopters, our users. And of course, it's very, very important that these channels fit uh, with the solution and use model. Uh, and that uh, we, we use the most efficient ways to get in touch with the early adopters. And this is also why it's very important to identify the early adopters in a precise way, uh, 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 trying to avoid as much as possible general statements, uh, because we need to fit the channels. And then, since the challenge is sustainability, uh, we need to understand how we are going to finance next steps after the project ends. If at the end of the project, the TRL is still low and we need to apply to another project uh, uh, program, uh, to another program, research program, uh, we need to understand how much we need uh, to do what. And we need to make sure that we do all the activities needed to secure this. But if the TRL is not low, we may not get 100% of the cost covered 
So we need to understand how to cover the remaining co-funding, uh, which means negotiating within our structure, within our organization. Or if we want to go out and do some licensing, uh, uh, we need to understand and plan how many licenses we are uh, willing to um, close the agreement for and what is the value we expect to extract from each license or from a contract from this uh, contract research why because making sure that the result is used out of uh, after the project ends in a way in another generate costs cost of the people working, cost of the infrastructure we need to use, cost of the research activities we need to keep running in order to maintain the edge, cost of participating to conferences, so on and so forth. And this is why at the end of the day, we need to have a clear view of the revenues because we need to make sure that this cost are covered. The Lean Canvas provides the overall framework to start putting things uh, in the right box and understand how to pave the road towards use and exploitation. Uh, of course, it may not fit if we keep things uh, uh, and interpret things strict to sensu, uh, as the Latin would say. Uh, may not perfectly fit the purpose of exploiting research results. Uh, but if, for example, for revenue streams and cost structure, uh, we give a, a, a broader interpretation towards sustainability in use, then we all realize that this is a very helpful tool to put things uh, in the right place. And of course, last but not the least, since uh, we would like to achieve some goals, sustainability, and this is also part of the roadmap, but we need to understand what are the key elements, the key metrics we need to look at to understand if we are going towards the right direction. Powell uh, will uh, show us how the link canvas is the base for a good pitch, because if the link canvas is done in the proper way, the assumption of validated early adopters, then we have all the information needed to present our solution to potential users or to our boss to raise funds and allow us to keep working on that or to other donors or investors to convince them then to continue or to support us providing the funds needed. And this is part of the pitch. And there are also other tools uh, that help us to fine tune the right things to say uh, for each specific target group. And again, uh, this is also the bridge uh, in between exploitation and dissemination, uh, which helps us to maximize the impact of ECOE. So thank you very much. This is all I wanted to say. Uh, of course, uh, it's, it's just a taste uh, of what the, the people working on this selection of careers is experiencing. And uh, I, I really feel that Powell will provide us with a good insight with this uh, in Canvas and mainly with a pitch on what can be achieved. Thank you very much.